These are my top five spiritual teachers who are still alive that helped me so much. If you are interested in great spiritual teachers who already passed away, make sure to check out this video in the info box. I hope it's the right corner. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. Right now, somebody else, if they determine what should happen around you, you feel like a slave. But right now, somebody else is determining what should happen within you. Is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you are happy or unhappy. Is this not slavery? Somebody can decide whether you will be a pleasant human being or an unpleasant human being. Is this not slavery? What happens within you, somebody else determines. This is the worst form of slavery, isn't it? It is just that because everybody is like that, it seems to be normal. It is not. It is not normal. Just because everybody is like that, it does not become normal. This human being, life around you will not happen, will never happen hundred percent the way you want it. If your pleasantness is dependent upon what happens around you, the chances of you being pleasant all the time is remote, isn't it? What happens within you? Who should determine? Definitely you should determine what should happen within this, isn't it? So if you determine what's happening within this, your whole experience of life will be determined by you, nobody else but you, isn't it? The events around you may not be determined by you, but how your experience of life is on this planet is one hundred percent determined by you if you take charge of this. One of the greatest addictions or one of the greatest addiction never actually you never read about it in the papers because the people who are addicted to it don't know it. It's the addiction to thinking. It's actually addictive. Can't stop thinking. It's like can't stop drinking, can't stop smoking, can't stop eating, can't stop thinking. Thinking is the greater addiction than any of these. And then some other thought will come. What's this all about? And then you can allow that thought to arise and then be present again. Which means you're not really, your priority is no longer to follow the thought where it wants to take you. Because the thought has a magnetic pull, it wants more of your consciousness, but it wants to grow. Because it's a little entity, it wants to grow, so it wants your attention. And in subtle ways it tries to get your attention, it says, it might even use a bodily feeling, it says, God, I'm hungry suddenly, why didn't I need to eat something? And then you think of a re what restaurant I'm going to afterwards. <laughs> and so the presence is gone, you are gone, you are looking for a restaurant in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> when you follow a thought, it goes like that, you can wake up twenty minutes later, and it started with being a little bit hungry and thinking of a restaurant and it ends up with thinking about how undreadful your life is. Love is always the same experience. There are no degrees of it. There is, it love is always impersonal. It, it, it's like the sun. It is, just, it is just the shining of our shared being. That shared being can be obscured by clouds of thoughts and feelings, but even when it is obscured, like the sun, it is always shining with the same brilliance. Yes. And every time we feel love for anyone and everything, it is the light of infinite consciousness shining in our hearts. And whenever you meet a stranger on the street and you, you smile at them, that is a little shining of love being just a little recognition of, of our shared being with that apparent stranger who in that moment is not a stranger, he is yourself. So let me reinterpret what you are, are asking. Is, is it possible for psychedelic experience to facilitate the thinning out of the cloud cover of thoughts and feelings and therefore make available yes, exactly. this, 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 that? Okay, I, I grant you. Uh, the, in, in this experience that there was a, a thinning of the cloud cover yes. of thoughts and feelings and as a result this, this, this ever-present 
being. You you mm -hmm. you felt it, and you realized you you felt that this being was universal. It is a, there is only one being yeah. in existence, and that's what you felt. Mm -hmm. It yes. is thoughts and feelings that fragment or seem to fragment this single being into a multiplicity and diversity of, of selves. Up until you see beyond it, everything is dominated by, by oneself, is it not? I want to be awakened, I want to be enlightened, I want to have some spiritual revelation, which is really no different than, I want an ice cream cone, I want to be loved, I want to be agreed with, I want to be disagreed with, I like or I don't like. Do you see how the, the fiction of self always keeps itself in the center of one's consciousness. And spiritual awakening is seen through the fiction of that, that actually there isn't actually a self in the center of one's consciousness. That's what this term that I use, that a lot of people don't like, or it frightens them, emptiness means. Empty of self. Full of reality, absolutely full of the divine, but empty of self. Of course, self wants it both ways. Huh? It, wants to, it wants to have the divine, but make sure I'm here <laughs> to experience it. So I come here. I just come to help each person, anybody who wants, anybody who doesn't want, that's fine, but anybody who wants, to actually look into the nature of their experience here and now. And the first thing you might see, there isn't actually self-nature in any of this experience. You might see it like you see a teacup or an orange or a microphone. You're like, I see it. There's really not. Confusion is confusion. Clarity is clarity. Happiness is happiness. Sadness is sadness. Consciousness is consciousness. And there isn't a self to which all that's pertaining. It's also possible you might be, go beyond just seeing it because to see it isn't quite the same as to realize it, is it? It's in the same way that to see an orange is not the same thing as eating an orange. So you can have it pointed out to you, yes, there's an orange. You go, oh, I've never seen one, lovely. To see the absence of self is one thing. To experience it is quite something else. But to see it opens the doorway to the experience. How, how, I, how I can keep it. Relationships are not something to keep. It's to be enjoyed out of your freshness. And uh, in, in your strength you find that everything becomes more pure. Uh, everything wants to be with you when you're empty of intention. You know, too much intention creates tension in your natural state of being. You don't need, don't need to be approved of. You don't even feel you need to be loved even. Can you imagine such a thing? of being in a place where you don't even need, you don't need it to be loved. It's a very quiet place. In this place, your love becomes very open, very broad, very beautiful, very strong. Look at what it is that feels anything good, I must grab it. Just to look at that. And uh, who is doing this? You see, who needs this thing? And be very, very quiet with this kind of question to see what are what is functioning in your name and find out is it really you or is it just uh, some kind of image that is a projection of your mind and some space will come and that space will be something uh, very important to recover again
hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like here, comment who of those teachers was the most interesting one. And you should definitely also check out this video about spiritual teachers. And yeah, why not this one as well? Have a great day. My name is Till and this is Till Talk.